Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I have prepared two multiple choice questions for you and as usual I recommend you to stop video here, read the questions, answers, choose the correct answers and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanations. And here is the first question. If a gene contains three introns, message RNA DNA hybridization experiment would form and here is the four answers to choose from. If you are not sure which answer to choose, here is my explanation. Imagine that this is double-stranded DNA and here we would have a fragment that corresponds with a gene. Gene within this double-stranded DNA. And one strand of the DNA would be coding strand of the DNA, another would be template strand of the DNA. Now imagine that uh, during the process that we call uh, transcription, message RNA would be produced. So here is a message RNA that is going to be complementary to the uh, template strand of the DNA. And uh, of course, uh, in the eukaryotes, we have here uh, some sequences that code for the introns and some sequences that code for the exons. So here in the immature message RNA, we also would have these sequences that later would be spliced off. So actual size of the message RNA would be much smaller because uh, it wouldn't have these fragments that code for the introns. So here we would find only exons. So if we again hybridize this mature message RNA with this corresponding um, template strand of the DNA, what going to happen? And this is what going to happen. Because we have here uh, two introns and uh, introns were spliced off from the mature message RNA. Here we would have uh, fragments that going to be single-stranded DNA and other fragments would be double-stranded uh, hybrid between DNA and RNA. So this is going to be a sequence that correspond to the uh, exons and this uh, single-stranded DNA would be sequence that corresponds with um, introns. So because we have here two introns, here we are going to get in our uh, hybrid uh, two R loops. Such loops called R loops because they would be induced by the mature message RNA hybridization with corresponding template strand of the DNA. So now we can solve our problem. In our problem it is stated that we have fragment of the DNA and here we have three introns. So one intron, second intron and third intron. And uh, when we make message RNA from such a fragment, this message RNA in mature message RNA also would have these three introns that later would be spliced off. And now if we would hybridize such a fragment of the DNA that have these three introns with mature message RNA that would have only uh, this fragment here that is exon, this fragment here that is also exon, this one and this one. So we have here in mature message RNA only these fragments and introns shown with red color would be spliced off. So as you see our mature message RNA would be much shorter because it doesn't include this sequence. So here would be our message RNA that is much shorter and hybridization would look like this. So one, two and three introns that is present on the uh, DNA would form so-called R loops and these uh, fragments here would be double-stranded hybrids between uh, message RNA and DNA. So we would have one, two, three loops and one, two, three and four double-stranded fragments. 
So as you see, the correct answer is answer C. Three loops and four double-stranded axon regions. And by the way, uh, gene always starts with axon and ends with axon. It never starts with intron or it never ends with intron. Introns only can be found within a gene. And next question, what is the purpose of the addition of fermamide during DNA-RNA hybridization? And imagine that this is graph that shows temperature that is needed in order for double-stranded DNA to become single-stranded DNA. So at this temperature, uh, it's not important right now for my explanation what's the temperature. Uh, at this temperature, uh, double-stranded DNA would uh, become single-stranded DNA, would separate. Usually this uh, happens over 90 degrees of Celsius. But if we lower the temperature, the formation of double-stranded DNA wouldn't be at the same temperature at which we would see formation of the single-stranded DNA. It would be at the lower temperature, so our graph may look like this. And if we add uh, in this mixture RNA, single-stranded RNA, in order to make uh, hybrids between DNA and RNA, Actually, uh, DNA-RNA hybrids are more thermally stable, even more stable than double-stranded DNA itself. So, uh, this process occurs naturally. Now imagine what would happen if uh, RNA-DNA uh, hybrids would happen at this temperature, that is, below this uh, optimal temperature for uh, double-stranded DNA formation, we would have very few hybrids. But because uh, double-stranded DNA would be formed at the higher temperatures. But now imagine that we can make our process to be in this temperature region. And that means that uh, here we would have more hybrids between DNA and RNA because uh, temperature threshold for formation of the double-stranded DNA would be much lower. And we add formamide in our solution for uh, our hybridization process to happen within this temperature region. So this helps us to yield much more DNA-RNA hybrids than if uh, this process would happen at the lower temperature at which uh, double-stranded DNA would form. So now we can choose our answer and as you see the correct answer would be answer B. So this allows to denature the DNA and allow RNA to bind to the DNA at more optimal temperatures. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.